Previously on Inside Fighting. Just after 5 a.m., uh, we're picking the wee man up. <laughs> Carl deserves to win a world title at third weight. I know how much it'd mean to him. There's something different about this one. To become a three weight world champion, that's big. It is like a member of your family representing your car. Or that's what he makes you feel like. At this stage of his career now, can he find that hunger to go again? Is it enough to want to be a three weight? world champion. I'm not the champion here, he's the champion. Mentally he's very tough, physically he's the biggest man I've ever fought. I can't rely just on size, I have to still prepare for the best Carl Frampton that I could possibly imagine. He's a family man, he speaks well, he's a man of the people and where he's from. I respected the man and uh, even more so after. He is having to go absolutely into the well, Carl Frampton. Back comes Warrington again. I feel like cram watching Christine ring earlier. It hurts me more watching her. I'm pissed off. I'm annoyed like everybody else. And I still don't know exactly what is going to happen. Hey, do I, ah! I miss the kids when I'm away. I miss my wife. I can't wait for him to repair. I'm excited for him coming home and all, but he really likes boxing, so it'll be a tough choice for him. He just has to win. Oh, you're going to be first kid right at the top. Go on! The next time I'm home, I plan on being a three-way world champion. And the new champion of the world, Carl the Jackal Just sitting here in Dublin Airport. There he is, the man himself. He's turned me into the strongest man in Belfast. <laughs> Waiting to fly out to Dubai, well, Istanbul and then Dubai. We'll be arriving on middle of the night in Dubai and uh, hit the ground running when we get there. Where are you going, lads? <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Tell you what, Istanbul is absolutely alive. We're in uh, downtown Dubai, right beside the Dubai Mall and the Burj Khalifa. Settled into our surroundings. So this is our apartment. There's a toilet in there. Someone at the door. Who's this? All right, son. What's happening? Come on in. Oh, fuck. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. room. The Tursun's from Kazakhstan just recently joined. Our team trains with Jamie and stuff. What, what a fighter this guy is, by the way. What's in here? I don't know. Wash machine. This is the kitchen, which is all right. Nigel's room. Doesn't make his bed. Why not make your bed? Or open, your, or open your blinds. What? It's all one room. I ain't got a door, have I? This is our view, which is Pretty fucking nice, if I'm being honest. Nice to come out here and have a coffee and stuff in the mornings. There's a living room. Jamie, Miguel. Miguel. This is my room. I make my bed, which is what you should do. Everybody should make their bed in the morning. Makes you feel better about yourself. This is my... Uh, it's a bit messy in here, this is where I keep my clothes. And this is my ensuite bathroom. A bit smelly in there because it's not long out of it. We are one week from weighing. 
eight days from Friday for Carl Frampton to cement his legacy as the greatest fighter that's come out of Ireland. Let's go, kid. The sport is, you know, it's very difficult and it's very hard. So if you can do it with a smile on your face, uh, then, then it makes it easier. And that's, you know, part of my job. You had one job. <laughs> you had one job. Press the fucking ball. Press the ball one job. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> Idiots. Idiot, yeah? Idiot, yeah? Idiot. Yeah. Idiot? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure. In, in the dictionary, picture of him. Cool. <laughs> I'm a week out from the fight. Um, just finished my last hard training session a few hours ago and I'm feeling absolutely electric. Uh, struggling. Uh. Oh, I'm getting out, fuck it. Come on, stick it. Can't. Come on, mate, just breathe. My feet. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Obviously the big difference between training in Dubai and, and back home in the UK or, or Ireland is the weather. Uh, it's much nicer here but also the fact that a lot of the country is in lockdown. There's not a lot you can do when you're back at home. Just the, the chance to have a bit of freedom over here, to walk around and, and, and have coffees. And obviously we're trying to stay away from overpopulated places and the chance that someone picks up COVID. Um, we're sanitizing, we're doing all the right things, wearing our masks, but it's just a much easier way of life over here and, and, and everybody seems to be enjoying it. This is how you cook scrambled eggs, people overcook them, but shouldn't be overcooked. So anyone wants to say these scrambled eggs aren't cooked enough, they're talking out their arse. I'd be happy for him to make weight tomorrow. He's well ahead of his target weight, and if anything, we're, we're asking him to, to eat more because um, is he, he, he turned up to a certain thing regarding sparring. The last spar was a couple of days ago. So we had, we had to ask, make, make sure that he was eating up to it, so to put weight on. So he's a fine on target. I like that. Everybody says they make the weight easy. I make this weight easy. I do make super featherweight easy. You know, I'm not a genuine super featherweight. I'm a featherweight. I've been a super bantamweight before. But um, Jamel Herring is a big guy coming down and boiling himself down into weight. So he finished his amateur career at 64 kilos, what, like 10 years ago. Now he's boxing 10 years later as an older man when your metabolism slows down at 59 kilos. When you're killing yourself constantly to make the weight, it catches up with you. And I just think that this is gonna be the night that it's caught up on, on Jamil Harry. There comes the point in your career where you've struggled too much. You've killed your body too much to make the weight. And I think we can see that in Jamel's recent performances. And I'm going to go right through this guy. I genuinely believe it. Ready? Let's go, son. Personator. Small walk. Small walk. Yeah. Come on, no. Oh, he's coming. Oh! <laughs> That's peer pressure if ever I see you. Yeah, my boy. Come on, son. One One minute. Minute. Come on, kid. Come on, kid. And maybe I'm being naive. Maybe I'm being a little bit naive. I was saying, how the, how the fuck can Mayweather? So Mayweather's now the face of Boohoo. Which is is it? A catalog thing. Yeah. Tube station. The picture of Mayweather like that, squatting down. So you'd expect him to be getting a million pounds, and I thought, wow. Mate, a million, Mayweather, he, won, he won't do that for a million. Got, be way more than a million. Billions, hasn't he? This what thing. the fuck is he doing to get another 500 grand for? Oh. And he's got, he's got, he needs to have time away from his family. I know. This cameo shit, charging people a grand or whatever to say happy birthday or congratulations, oh. like, what? Why does he, he doesn't need it? They reckon he'll do a hundred million for, to fight this fucking YouTube dickhead. 
100 million pounds if they're a YouTuber. So it's sold straight away then, so why does he need to spend it there away from these Don't know, just, kids? Just, just loves the dope. What the fuck? Let me phone uh, Jamie. Temporarily unavailable, okay, Jamie's so number, what's that mean? Okay, look at that. Look, look at that. Beautiful. Jimmy, we're just walking over the bridge now, mate. Uh, towards the burge. Uh, let me know where you are, mate. Oh, you would look good on there. Come on. No. Not doing it, though. No. Come on. No. <laughs> just go, go push that kid up. It goes my turn. <laughs> Listen, when he came to me, he was very, very sad in boxing. He didn't enjoy the sport. It was a means to an end. And for him to now do interviews and say he loves the sport again and you know for for for, for us to play a part in turning that around for him that makes me proud i know yeah. Listen, i'm gonna set off walking now because my legs fucked you belt him when i shout now <laughs> we've had him living on and off with us at my house for the last 12 months and I sit there listening, talking to the kids every day and, uh, and I see the pain he goes through being away from Christine and the kids. So from a selfish point of view, of course I'll be sad for him to go, but, you know, let's think about it. 15, 16 months ago, when we were sat in the changing rooms after the Josh Warrington fight, and he said, that's me done. I was happy for him, not because he's lost, but because he gets his life back. He's achieved so much in his career and he doesn't have to worry about what he's gonna do for the rest of his life because he's secured his family's future. And if we can play a little small part in making them better people and better fighters, then, then perfect. But let's have it right, it's more important to be a better person than a better fighter. I just met some of Jamel's team last night, um, Bomac. Um, the other guy uh, who who takes him on the pads, Raiders, I think you call him, and and the other the other guy um, who I think helps manage some fighters with him, the the, the smaller the smaller dude, um, nice people, really really nice people, and it was nice of them to say hello. You don't know what it's going what you're going to expect when you bump into teams and team members. I kind of expected. These guys to be nice, they seem like they're nice people, so um, it's good. It's all good and love and war. This is just a fight after all, and uh, we all know exactly what it is. First of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Siddiqui and, and D4G and um, also MTK for, for making this fight happen. It's been it's been a long time coming. Um, it seems like we've been talking about this fight for well over a year now. Um, I, I feel like it was it was definitely beneficial for me to get out here early. I had a sparring partner with me. Um, I finished preparation here. Um, and yeah, I think it was beneficial to get used to my surroundings and the heat and everything else. And um, I've, I've finished off what has been a, a very, very good camp. People have been very um, open, open-hearted. Um, you know, I got, to, I got to do a little sightseeing. Everyone, for some reason, they keep calling me Obama, but um, <laughs> but I guess that's how it goes. <laughs> but no, I, 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 overall, I'm just glad to finally be here. You know, we had a um, few delays, but you know, the, the time has come, and I'm just happy to be here. In the build-up to this fight, a lot of chat about your past and your time in the Marines as well. Do you think that that has, has helped sort of form you as an individual and your approach to the fight game? I, um, I believe everything that I've been through in life that led me to this point has, you know, has formed me to be who I am today. Um, especially, yeah, of course, you got to um, bring, you know, look at my military experience, but 
I just think, you know, even before then, you know, how my upbringing and how I was raised has, you know, has molded me into the man you see today. I don't really have too, too many complaints, and you know, people will talk about the, the hand injury that, that delayed this fight for, for a little while, but, it, you know, it was, it was something very, very small. It was no real issue, um, and I finished off sparring. I took a kind of bit of TLC on my hand for a week or eight days and back sparring, um, hitting the heavy bags. Um, but the camp, apart from that, has been top-notch, very good, no complaints. Um, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just where I need to be right now, and I'm looking forward to the fight. Jamie, um, same question to you. How's, how, how have preparations been ahead of this one? Exactly how Carlos just said, you know, when you sort of have a vision in your mind where you want him to be, especially for a fight of this magnitude and uh, knowing what Carl can do and, and how he can perform, I had a picture in my mind of where I wanted him to be. And he's probably a little bit in front of that. Just like, um, you know, Jamie Moore said, we had to kind of scale it back ourselves because of the postponements from one time to another. But, you know, we, we, it, it was good. You know, if, if anything, I just formed more chemistry within my team, you know, and we know this is a big fight. We, we, took it very, we took the whole camp very seriously. We didn't, you know, we didn't complain when the, when the postponements happened because, you know, as you, everyone knows, in 2020, I had my own postponements. So, you know, I'm just glad that, you know, he's well and he's here and we can, um, you know, get the people a good fight. Doing my last little sweat. Now, considering I haven't trained since Monday, this was always the plan, to train on the morning of the way in and I'd only, when I woke up, just over three pounds to lose, so done about 45 minutes, skipping, like on the, on the bike, low intensity stuff, in a hot room, I think I'm on it. How far do you got to go? Three and a half pounds, well I only started here, so I'm, I'm not dry yet, so perfect. Obviously the fight's at a weight division above, which is nowhere near as bad, but I did say to Carl, before this um, training camp started, which was initially before it got uh, postponed a little bit, that I wanted him to be a featherweight in there. How are you feeling, son? Good. You know, although Herring's much bigger, um, I don't see size, um, the, the way the fight playing out, I don't see size being an issue in that sense. I think it'd be more of a technical fight. So, so why does he want to be bigger? You know, that's that's only can hinder him in a way because I feel like speed and agility will be what wins in the fight. So I wanted him to be a featherweight and not have to drag himself down in weight to to sort of get that extra bit of weight off. So and he's done it perfectly. He's, he's exactly where he would be when he's making 126 and he's got four pound less to take off for the win, which is obviously going to be much fresher for this fight. And now time for the reigning, the defending, the WBO Super Featherweight Champion of the World. Please welcome to the official win, Jamal Sempervi! Official win is 58.7 kg. Jamal Herring's obvious advantage, and I believe it's his only advantage, is size. He's miles bigger than Carl, but everyone's bigger than Carl. Carl's a pocket dynamo. I visualise Carl pushing Herring back. I visualise shots that I think are going to work. Slipping inside. Hurting him downstairs, switching it upstairs, the left up. I visualise the end. Carrying the kid round the ring. With a belt above his head with a big smile on his face and him walking off into the sunset with the third world title in the third weight division. When I was a kid growing up as an amateur boxer, there was kids who were better than me in Belfast 
there was kids who, from Belfast who had beaten me. And I kind of think back sometimes to the end points and think like, why is that kid not where I am today? And, and the only answer I've ever been able to come up with is I wanted it more than them. I've just wanted this so much and I've worked my whole life for it and I'm on the verge of becoming Ireland's greatest ever fighter. No doubt in my mind.